we finally have a subtitle for the next Legend of Zelda game, Breath of the Wild. Um, it is definitely not a typical Zelda subtitle, oddly enough. Um, you know, normally they name these things after some item or like a character's name. Um, this is just kind of a broad concept, it seems, of how the game is going to play and, and, and what you're going to be doing in it. Um, and I've been reading some interviews with um, IG Anuma about um, what his vision was for this game. And we haven't really seen much of... Like, this This gives us a lot to go on, what we saw in E3. And I do have to say before we get into the details on this, uh, on the new Zelda, I haven't seen this much excitement for a Zelda title since Ocarina of Time. And I'm not just saying that. Like, this seems like, as much as we were giving Nintendo grief about having E3 just focus on this one game, it might have been a good call on their point, because I honestly didn't see them talk about many other titles. It, the focus was definitely Zelda. Yeah. Um, it was the most popular booth there, according to some reports. Um, you know, very long lines to play, uh, play the demo of the game. And apparently... Um, in the demo, they give you about 20 minutes to play the game um, and be in this little plateau area. And they're claiming in that 20 minutes, no one's going to be able to find everything in the plateau. You're not going to be able to do everything that there is to do there. And in that general plateau area, this is according to, to Nintendo, by the way, that only represents 1% of the total game. So I think this is what I love about this. And going back to those interviews with Anuma, he said that he wanted to, and I've been thinking about this for years, as much as I love Zelda, there needs to be a little bit of innovation. As much as I love Zelda, the whole, you know, um, eight dungeons, then beat Ganon. Like, for some games, yes, it's good to return to that formula. Um, that's actually one of the things I really liked about Majora's Mask was there was only four dungeons, and you actually did a lot of the other stuff in the overworld and in the town, um, doing a lot of questing outside of dungeons. Um, but what Anuma has, has said is that he's with this title, he wants to break away from what people have come to expect of a Zelda game and my goodness, the direction they're taking with this, let's, let's talk graphics first. So graphics with this game, when it was first announced and we first got a glimpse of, you know, Link fleeing from this robot laser shooting thing, um, it pretty much looked 100% cell shaded very much in the vein of how Skyward Sword looks just with, uh, you know, fresh coat of high definition. Um, and it didn't look overly compelling to me, at least. I thought it looked a little bit, you know, I was like, ah, okay. I, I see. We're still, you know, we're, we still have the, I call it the combination of Wind Waker and Twilight Princess, where we don't have Toon Link, we have the Adult Link. But, but it's, it's cartoon. A, yeah, but it's a cell shade, um, uh, look to the game and i'm okay with that um haven't beaten skyward sword but that game that is definitely to me that definitely captures everything that um zelda is visually and it looks like they have taken this and gone far far beyond i can't really describe it it doesn't look cell shaded at times other times it looks 100% cell shaded. It all they're doing something with lighting in this game that I haven't really seen other games do. If something's in sunlight, it looks to be have that cartoony cell shaded look to it. If something's in the in the dark or in the shade, it has a much more grittier, realistic texture to it, and it looks amazing. 
like these two art styles are just coming together in a way that um, I don't think anyone ever expected to. And I, for one, am really glad that I own a Wii U at this point. <laughs> uh, but what did you what did you think of the graphical style now? Oh my goodness. I absolutely loved it. Like, I feel like that's one thing that Skyward Sword, uh, like, that's, like, definitely something they did right, is I feel like Legend of, uh, like, Zelda shouldn't be uh, a realistic-looking game. Uh, not to say that uh, Twilight Princess was bad. It's probably one of my favorite games, just because Yeah. that was the, like, that was the time where I started getting into, like, real gaming, and when, like, the uh, older, uh, like, Majora's Mask and, um... Ocarina, Ocarina time. Of time, like I was a little too young to, um, you know, admire what those games were at the time, uh, or even like understand how to play them. Uh, but like starting with Flame Waker and then going up, like I've, Flame Waker was probably the first console Legend of Zelda game that I played, and ever since then I've absolutely loved the cartoon style of that game. Like I love Toon Link. And just the look of them, and I love the art style of that whole game. Um, and I've pretty much played almost every uh, cartoon Zelda game for like they've mostly been out for like the DS. Um, yeah. Which, With the exception of Wind Waker. Yeah. Uh, which is kind of a shame, but uh, I have a DS, so I don't have a problem with that. Um, and then seeing like Twilight Princess come out and they wanted to do like a more like darker, grittier, uh, realistic version of like Legend of Zelda. Like I loved the, I loved this, the look of it. I liked the more dark version that they took and everything kind of had more of a realistic or maybe not like a realistic, but more of like a, um, like a texture to it. Maybe, I don't know. It just, it felt it different. Was... Definitely more realistic than Wind Waker. Yeah, yeah. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. But looking at like every other Legend of Zelda game, like that's the only one that's done something like that. And there were a few people that didn't like the way that it looked. They didn't feel like it looked like a Legend of Zelda game. Um, but there were a lot of people that also thought that it looked great and that they should do a lot more games like that. I kind of meet at the middle where I think it was good for what it was um in the game i feel like kind of deserved a more realistic look to it just being how dark it was yeah i didn't feel like a cartoon would like really capture the the feel of it um so i understand why they did it and i think for what the game was it looked great but i feel like for going forward it should it really should be more of a like an animated style um and i feel like what uh what skyward sword did with it was great uh, that was definitely a step in the right direction. And then this game was just, oh my gosh, I love the art style of everything. It's like, it, it really is just like a combination of like realistic and cartoon mixing. And then just like this beautiful baby of just, ah, like uh, as an artist, as a digital artist myself, looking at that was like, it was like when I first played Wind Waker for the first time. It's just like I absolutely love this, and it's like I absolutely love this even more. It just looks so good, and yeah, like what you said with the lighting, like that's definitely something that caught my eye, and that was really cool. Yeah. And um, it's both and neither at the same time. Exactly. It's, it's hard to describe how yeah. this game looks. And like. Like you said, like looking at it now, I would be completely fine if that's all that Nintendo talked about. Uh, which, you know, other than like a few things about Pokemon, there really wasn't anything else discussed at E3 for Nintendo. But like, this was huge. And just like, oh my goodness. I, I don't know like how to describe the art style of it, but it's just so good and it looks great. And I might have to buy a Wii U <laughs> if it comes out or you sooner. Could, or you could buy an NX because they did also announce that it is going to launch simultaneously on the Wii U and the NX at the same time. They're they're pulling a, a Twilight Princess on us. Oddly enough, <laughs> we keep talking about that game. Um which 
launched on Wii and then a couple months later on the GameCube. Um, yeah, I'm. I have no plans of of getting an NX at this point. Um, so I will definitely be getting the Wii U version. I didn't realize the Wii U could pull this off. This is easily the best looking game on the system so far. Um, and back to uh, what I was saying about um, IG Aonuma, he was saying how he wanted to get away from the Zelda conventions. It's funny, to me, it feels like the game that this is most similar to is the original Legend of Zelda, where you start out, you have nothing. I mean, you literally, if you watch the the demos of this, you wake up, you have underwear. That's about it. You you wake up in your skivvies, and you have to go. You have to find protection. Link gets hungry. He'll start losing quarter hearts if you don't keep him fed. Which I've always loved that type of stuff in games. I do think it can get a little bit crazy. Um, Dark Cloud had like a it not only had a thirst meter, but your weapons could break, and it was a little bit too micro managing level for me. But another game that I'm that I really love for the PS1 is Brave Friends from Musashi, which you have a tired meter, and as time goes by, you you know you get tired, your attacks get less and less effective until you know you go to the castle, take a nap, sleep for eight hours, and then you're good to go. Um, and you also get hungry in that game as well, um, but you can find items to, of course, do that. So I like elements like that. Um, and I know other games have done over the years, um, but I think just keeping it something this simple as, you know, hey, Link needs to to go hunting to keep himself fed. That makes perfect sense in the in the context of this game. Um, and they also announced that if you have the Wolf Amiibo, Wolf, uh, Wolf Link Amiibo, that comes with the HD version of Twilight Princess, which now they have seriously gotten me on the fence of picking up. <laughs> but um, there's a uh, there's there's a trial that you do in the game. It's like a cavern of sorts and in Twilight Princess, and it's the harder it's like the hard challenge of the game. And if you clear it, um, apparently the Wii U version will allow you to transfer that information over to the uh, wolf amiibo and none of nobody knew why it would let you do that but now we do know and that information you take over let's say uh, you beat the cavern and you have like 12 hearts left you can bring that amiibo amiibo over to the wii u version of breath of the wild and you get wolf link to assist you with as many hearts as you clear that cavern with and he goes and he'll hunt for you he will go attack enemies for you and of course you want him to have more hearts because when those hearts are gone he's gone too so i mean even just that little thing right there it's like man nintendo you and your amiibo <laughs> trying to get me to buy more and more games and it's like, and I already own that game. I have the GameCube version. I'm perfectly content with that version of Twilight Princess. Please, please stop this. Um, they know what they're doing with marketing. Gotta say. Yeah, the gameplay for this is just... Uh, it, it really does have, um, like, a, a, like, what he said as, like, a Skyrim open world... You know, and it's so much larger than what Skyrim was too. Like, I'm honestly fine with how long it's taken them to make this. What's it been like? Three years, four maybe. They have been working on this since they have announced the Wii U back in 2011. Really? Yes. They had a they had a, a real time demo of Link. He looked a lot like he did in Twilight Princess, but. It, the case could definitely be made for them developing this title since then. And I do want to say, is it just me, or does it seem like we're actually going to have voice acting in this Zelda 
is it that demo at E3 starts with what sounds like Zelda calling to him? Like Zelda actually has a voice in this. And a link, of course, and they should keep it this way if they do go with voice acting for the whole game. Link is, of course, mute. I, I gotta say, love it. Didn't Haven't seen anything about this game that I am not in love with. Oh, they also announced... <laughs> If you um if you want to, after the introduction sequence of this game, you can go off and fight Ganon. They've announced that yes, Ganon is the is the villain in the game. And you can go off and fight him with your three hearts and your skivvies. And uh, you know, see if you can beat him. Which someone probably will. You know, there are people out there who just hate themselves enough to where they, they have the willpower to do it. Or they just want to show everyone else else up and show everyone else how it's done. Yeah, but just uh, this game is going to... It's definitely going to be just probably one of the best games that Nintendo has released in a long time for really just anything. Reggie fils said that this is the biggest Zelda game... Or, no, this is the biggest game Nintendo has ever made, and it definitely looks like it. Oh, yeah, just like with how... Uh, how much they showed uh, with the trailer alone, uh, being able to climb things just naturally. Like, you don't have to look for vines. You can jump! Yeah. You have a jump button! That's cool. <laughs> no longer will you have to, like, go to a ledge and just, like, only be allowed to jump when you're at a when you're at an edge. Which works for, for those games, but just the fact that you can jump, it, like, something that simple. I'm just kind of like, uh, Link is jumping? There's voice acting. He's not wearing a green tunic. Yeah, that's... Which, which I'm sure you're, you'll be able to eventually, find. Yeah. yeah. Actually, from what I saw, it kind of looked like you were going to get like a suit of armor, kind of like how it was in... Um, that can break? Heroes of Hyrule. Because all your weapons and shields can break, too? <laughs> I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> I've, I've never liked the, um, the weapons, armor... From uh, what I've seen, it it's very easy to get replacements for them. Okay. Because... Like and and like with Wind Waker, how you had that mechanic of picking up en- enemies' weapons. They brought it back. They, they're bringing it back. Oh, that's I know. I love that. Just and like just walking around with like a skeleton arm, just beating other enemies with their own limbs or yeah. weapons is just. We can we could go on. We could literally make a podcast on this topic alone. Really. And I. This is definitely going to be something we're going to be talking about in the future as more news develops. It just seems like it's going to be such a long wait until it's available. Why? Why, Nintendo? 